Hello everybody. Well, my ballot paper arrived today for the general election. That is happening in 24 hours time and it just arrived today. So there's no way I'm going to be able to get this back. So my vote is completely and utterly, it's, it's wasted. And sending this to me, it's just a waste of taxpayers' money, quite frankly. I do wish the British government had given an extra period of time for those people who are submitting through postal votes from a different country. Here in Morocco, it, it's just never going to arrive in time. So, yeah, I think it's a waste of money and it's, it's a waste of my vote. So I hope... Maybe at some point in the future, governments do think about this and give in an extra period of time for overseas ballots to come through. Anyway, so it's arrived, and I thought I would just go through it with you. Uh, I don't know how many of you have ever seen these things, so here we go. It's my first, so there we go. So you'll notice, of course, at the very big top, it says, by airmail, but also par avion, which is, I don't know why we still do this in our official documentation that goes overseas we always add the french par avion i don't know why maybe that's something that probably nigel farage the uh, the marie le pen of british politics will actually look into that and removing the french um the other thing is so we got ballot paper enclosed for the address e only and that's me uh, open immediately do not delay I've got to get this back to them in 24 hours. And of course, it's from the Royal Mail. Not just any mail, but the King's Mail. Okay, here we go. Let's open it up. Oh, and it's also from Newcastle, which is my constituency area. Newcastle Central and West, I think it's called now. They've just changed it, so I don't know. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, so <laughs> okay, so this is great. So the envelope that I'm supposed to return the ballot in is already stuck down. I don't know if you can see that, but I can't open this up at all. It's okay. And it actually says, before you seal this envelope, make sure, and then there's a number of criteria that I have to obey, and I'm unable to open it. Okay, what else do I have? <gasps> this is the actual form. So the people who are standing in, in my area are Ali Avail. I don't know how to pronounce his name, I'm sorry. Ali is for the Liberal Democrats, which is kind of central left, although nowadays they seem to be a lot more left than, than the Labour Party. Um, Francis Lascon is the Conservatives. Uh, he hasn't got a chance in my area. Uh, Ashton Hector Muncaster from the Reform Party. So the Reform Party in the UK is like the uh, RN party in France. So this is very much Marie Le Pen, Nigel Farage. I actually think he's going to do very, very well in the northeast of England. I don't know about my constituency, but certainly he's going to do very, very well overall. This is my prediction. And then the, the, the sitting candidate is, again, I have no idea how to pronounce her name. Chi Chai Onwura. I don't rate her very much, quite honestly. I've had a few little dealings with her in the past, and she's never been that helpful. That's just uh, my, my opinion. And then we have John Pearson from the Green Party, which is obviously the Environmental Party. And then Habib Rahman, who is independent. And then Yvonne and Ridley, who is also independent. You know, I think one of the most uh, interesting things about this document is how many people are not actually British, like, you know, of, of British descent. So, oh, I'm going to get called out for being a racist here, but I'm just saying what I say here. I'm not saying whether it's good or whether it's bad. I'm just making the observation that we have about three or four people standing in this election who are not of, oh, they're brown-skinned, for God's sake. So, um, and I actually think that's great. Honestly, I, let me put this right on the record. I think that is fantastic that we have a wide variety of different nationalities, different backgrounds, 
because they're all going to bring something to the area, and I think that's great. I mean, you know, I, for God's sake, I live in a Muslim country, so, you know, you, you can't be racist and live in a Muslim country. It's impossible. Okay, and then we have, um, what the hell is this? Okay, um, they've given me an envelope, in, which I have to put inside another envelope. Anyway, so yeah, that's it. Uh, so it goes to Newcastle, and I just put it, everything in there, and then I'm supposed to put it in this one, which I can't put in, because it's sealed down. So yeah, um, that's it. Like I say, I, I think reform, the, the kind of extreme right wing, the Nigel Farage's party, I think is going to do very well. Personally, I would have voted for one of the independent candidates. Probably Habib, because uh, first of all, he lives in Newcastle, which is great. And I just think we need to break this two-party system that we have in the United Kingdom. This, it's either the Tories or it's Labour. And that, that needs to go. I'm not a great fan of reform, but I hope actually they do well because that's going to be something that goes towards breaking up this two-party system. If we can have a lot of smaller parties and a lot of independence, then um, I think that would be for the better, honestly. So yeah, so all I would say is if you are in Newcastle, um, the constituency area, and you're not planning on voting, but you don't mind voting for me because I can't get my paper there, then give my vote to Habib, Habib Rahman. I think he deserves it. Okay, that's it. That's just a little throwaway video because I've just got my ballot paper 24 hours before I'm supposed to vote. Well done, United Kingdom government. Bye now.